Uh, peas are coming along uh, well now, they're about uh, um, two and a half, three feet tall now. These are uh, golden, golden sweet. Um, and beyond I've got uh, something called Rosa Crone and your good old standard Kevin and Wonder. Uh, this is this is the Rosa Crone. It's um, it's not as vigorous as the Golden Sweet so far. Now this one's supposed to have um, a salmon pink flower. Um, need none of them have flowered yet, but it's only it's only a matter of time. And this is the uh, Kevin and Wonders. It's uh, early May. I think it's a um, Saturday, sixth. Of, it's the weekend. Uh, I think it's the sixth of May. Uh, that this is my greenhouse. Uh, we had a cold snap earlier on um, a couple of weeks back. It's held things back. But anyway, here's um, this is from Waitrose. This is um, this is a tomatillo. Uh, I spent four quid on it. Received wisdom is you need two to pollinate. Well, I had one last year and I got no berries on it at all. I gave it months to uh, sort itself out. Uh, so uh, I couldn't get any seed to germinate this year. I don't mind paying four quid each uh, if I can suss it out to grow them. Um, so so yeah I'm going to take cuttings from these and overwinter them or take seeds or try and keep the plants indoors or something like that. So I get my four quids worth, eight quids worth. Anyway right yeah so I'm looking forward to that. They're a bit like a bit like a tomato and you make salsa out of them in Mexico. Um, over here I've got dahlia, not really one for flowers, but um, but yeah, um, uh, it's a new challenge. Got peas, peas growing. I, I start them off in here and then take them out outside. Got leeks. Now these these um, these nice looking ones here. I I sort of seen on the first of January this year. Uh, the nice. Uh, they're nice, looking nice and thick. Um, I think I'll actually achieve the pencil thickness um, instruction that you get in gardening books before planting out um, this year, which I never do before. It never seems to hurt. Uh, over here, some um, this is mammoth uh, blanche leek, which my dad uh, gave me for my birthday. Um, uh, I don't have the heart to tell him I've got loads of leeks, but I shall. I shall eat them. Um, uh, they're a good variety of mammoth uh, blanche. These are autumn mammoth. Uh, we've got uh, coriander and lettuce. The lettuce is doing well in here. This in this um, support this um, environment provides of the greenhouse. Uh, this is jalapeno pepper, which I overwintered indoors in a pot. Earthenware pot is uh, with good drainage. With uh, soil with good drainage is the secret of keeping um, chilies alive. It's with their root, keeping their roots in water for months on end is what what kills them. Uh, after trying several years, I, I might have cracked it. This is Yolo, which is sweet pepper, which soaked from seed this year. We've got French beans. Uh, I think it was March. I put those uh, those in. They sort of dawdled about, and I put some more in, um, which are catching up quickly. Uh, these are uh, sweet million uh, tomatoes. I put them in in late March. And they've shot up. There was a bit. I thought it was a uh, risk taking, but they they said that they've, um, you know, with the uh, the English spring, it's it's okay. It's fine. They've um, they've shot up, and it's a good tasting uh, variety. I grew it last year, sweet million. So I'm growing it again. I should also be growing. Um, I've got the seedlings indoors. Is growing um, crimson crush, which is, which is blight resistant. You had a when I've grown it before. It's had a tiny weeny little bit of blight on it at most. Um, Whereas sweet million just immediately dies. Well, no, it doesn't, but it, it suffers. There's lettuce, uh, coriander. What is, uh, else has immediately died well before the season's even started is my melons. Um, these were killed by wood lice, but they just don't belong in this country, do they? Um, so, uh, yeah, they, they, they dawdled, suffered, and the wood lice took advantage. This is a watermelon, exactly the same thing. I, I was I was dreaming when I thought I could grow these. So I shall get two. This is a, a cucumber, so I shall get two cucumbers, two more cucumbers, and um, put them in the um, in there. Aubergines. Uh, it's, this is on the edge of um, being sensible. They're a heat lover as well. Uh, um, 
and uh, what else have we got? There's another aubergine, uh, a sweet potato in the background, and some more sweet peppers. This is a, a nice star uh, perennial broccoli. It's um, just coming to um, well, it's coming to the end, but there's still some really good broccoli on there. Um, I attribute this to well, I put two sort of double handfuls of compost on its roots um, late winter, sort of mid spring, and it seems to have prolonged prolonged it. Um, nice star perennial is um, is a is a broccoli that goes on for you know five or more years. Uh, it does get worn out, uh, but I think the the trick is feeding it. Anyway, um, today I'm going to uh, pick the uh, pick the broccoli and then take cuttings for to make new plants. And I'll show you how to do that. Star perennial broccoli. I know it looks like a cauliflower, but it's not. It's uh, it's a perennial broccoli, which means it goes on from year to year. Probably about five years old, but I keep get, taking cuttings and start new ones. Um, this is uh, it looks like a cauliflower curd, but it, it isn't. It has side shoots. We've got some appearing here and uh, else. So, um, which makes it a broccoli. Uh, anyway, uh, I think probably another week and then I'll... Um I'm picking it's a bit like uh, asparagus, you sort of bend it and then uh, if it easily breaks, that's the point to, uh, to break it off. There's been uh, a lot of snail damage. Uh, I went away for um, for a week uh, sort of, um, to take care of it. Which shows it's, it's reasonably tasty if, uh, if, the, if the wildlife's eating it. I'm going to uh, leave a few of the smaller ones to um, see if they grow any bigger. Take some cuttings now. The, um, right, I'm going to take some uh, cuttings now and um, uh, create new plants for um, next season, next April. So what I'm going to do, what I do, is try and get a heel cutting. So let's get this, get a, a stem and try and get a heel on there. So. Um, there's a heel. Now what I'm going to do is take off all these um, all these flowers, or the florets, and um, place them in um, in some soil to uh, to root. It should take about uh, a month uh, to uh, start off new plants. This uh, handy pot um, already got some cuttings from uh, Taunton Dean, and, and so, which is a kale. Uh, but what? Um, so I'm going to take these florets off, eat them. We don't really want it flowering, but if it does, it's not too much of a problem because we're only going to we want to make it a, a big, big plant. So, we'd, if it does uh, take root and start flowering, and just nip them off, and then it will turn into um, a, a plant that will grow bigger and to flower next year, next April. So, um, what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm going to cut it in half, break it in half, just the size of the leaves. It's just like um, like any other cutting that you do. So you um, 
which is perennial flowers and then with the heel pop it in the, pop it in the soil that should take it should take about uh, about a month to um, uh, to put on um, roots I'm also going to um, the remainder of that I'm going to pop in here and see if it uh, I always do heel cuttings but I've, I've noticed when I put um, like broccoli stems in the uh, in the compost they've rooted even when they you know there's no heel on them at all so so I'm going to give that a whirl I'm going to pop that in I'm going to take some more cuttings and, and uh, put them in and then um, in a month's time I'll dig them up for you and show you what they, what they look like And the single most important thing you do when doing this is to label them with the date, otherwise you won't be able to, um, you won't know what they are, and next year when you try and do it you won't know when, when to do it and how long it takes, so um, really important labelling. It's, um, it's time to do, um, time to do me beans, uh, it's May, every year I do them way too early, it's what I sow them in March, and uh, basically it'll leave me with a a jungle in the living room. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so what I do now, this is so later, because I very often find I kill them before before it's warm enough for them to be in the ground. So, um, so anyway, yeah. Compost. I'm going to do one seed per pot. And this is, uh, these seeds are um, cobra, which is high yielding. And for a gardener like me, who likes pretty plants, it's got a little uh, purple flower, which is a French bean. And uh, the black seeds. And um, high yielding. Uh, good tasting as well. So, uh, I'll also be growing um, borlotti. So these are the green fresh pods, you know, uh, sliced beans. But borlottis, you can eat them, eat them sliced. But um, uh, I, I grow them. I let them stay on the on the vine um, until sort of October. And they, where all the uh, pods are brittle, and then just pull the uh, beans out. So, um, and they're really, really worth growing bolotti beans. It's really tasty. Uh, the beans much tastier than any other other bean I've tried. Take the, take the bean, pop it in just a little bit, then cover it over and give them all a big drink afterwards.